Hi, I'm Gilad, Director of Product at Iguazio. Today we are going to show an end-to-end -end MLOps demo of the Iguazio Feature Store. We're going to see three main steps, data ingestion preparation, model training and testing, and real-time data and model pipeline deployment. All this functionality is available as part of MLRAN, which is Iguazio's open source MLOps orchestration framework. For this demo, we're going to use healthcare data, specifically COVID-19 patient monitoring. We're going to get data from healthcare systems, such as blood tests, patient records such as person's age, and real-time sensor data such as heart rate and respiratory rate. All this data is going to be available in the feature store. We'll let it use, use this data to train a model and deploy it. To start off in our Python code, we simply import the MLRAN feature store module, and we're going to show how we read from various sources, CSV, Parquet, and HTTP. First thing to do is to define a feature set which allows us to group several features together and define their entity key and timestamp columns. We'll read the data frame. We can see that each line is a measurement with source and parameter columns. We'd like to transform this data and have a column per each source and parameter combination. So for example, source three and parameter zero would be a column. Following that, we'll create an aggregation. The code you see here creates this pipeline. So with very few lines of code, I can define this complex logic I just described. We can also visualize this graph to help us better understand the execution process. Next, we're going to ingest the data by simply calling the ingest method. This will execute the graph and store the data, in this case to a parquet file, as well as a NoSQL database for fast retrieval. Now, we're going to look at patient details. We'll categorize each patient to a group based on age. We'll create one hot encoding and also impute any missing data. Once again, you can see a visualization of this execution graph. In this case, we show that we can also execute this graph in memory without storing any data. So I can infer my graph in this notebook and check the results. Once I'm happy with the output, I can ingest the data just like in the previous step. Another nice feature is the ability to define a Kubernetes job that performs this ingestion. This is useful for larger jobs or for there's a repeating batch process to ingest data. We can very easily define this. We just define a data source. In this case, it's a parquet file. Create a configuration that tells us ML run to run on Kubernetes and run the ingestion process with this configuration. This creates a job which I can run immediately or define a schedule that I can ingest new files as they become available. Finally, we're going to look at sensor data. We define here some validation on heart rate and respiratory rate. We also define classes that perform the transformation. These are simple examples of dropping columns or renaming columns, but you can define whatever logic you would like in the same manner. Just like before, we're going to create our pipeline. So we'll drop some columns, rename columns with incorrect names, and add a sliding window aggregation. We can infer the data in memory, just like before. We can also ingest the data, just like in the previous step. Here we also create a real-time ingestion function in a few lines of code. What we do here is define an HTTP source, convert our code to a function that can be executed by our serverless framework, and deploy an ingestion service that performs this ingestion. Now we can input the service sensor data, such as the one here, and this allows us to update the sliding window in real time. So our model serving will not just be able to read feature data, but also update the features. We can also look at the feature store via the UI. Here we see the feature sets, for example, measurements, the first feature sets that we created. We see general info, the features, the transformations that we chose, as well as statistics with pair feature histogram data. If we switch to the features tab, we can see the full list of features or course feature sets and for perform operations such as search. Now it's time to train our model based on the feature store data we just ingested. We'll create a feature vector and we choose the features we'd like to have in our feature vector. We can get these features for training by calling get offline features. Now we train the model. Specifically, we run three model types in parallel and we choose the best one. And here we see the results. We can inspect the vector in the UI. Here we see the feature vector we just created. Now it's time to deploy the model and use the feature vector for serving. We define a serving class we call get online feature service with the previous defined feature vector. We use this service every time to get the input to run our pipeline in real time and get the features. These features will be the input to the model. We can then run our model. In this case, we decided to create a model ensemble. We create a mock server in memory to test our model for serving purposes. We input some data and check the output. Finally, we deploy the model to Nucleo by calling the deploy method. We can now easily invoke this function. We can see the function in the UI. 
This is the project screen with the jobs, workflows, and functions we created. We can go to the patient prediction function. There are a lot of capabilities that we'll cover in other sessions, such as the ability to scale up or down, and setting triggers such as Kafka trigger rather than just HTTP. To summarize, we have seen how we can easily create a very versatile data ingestion pipeline with transformations and aggregations. Inference can run in memory, and data ingestion can be on demand or using Kubernetes job or real-time ingestion. We have also seen that once the features are defined, it's easy to define a feature vector, train models, and serve those models with the feature vector in real time. 